الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله فإن الله تعالى مع المتقين وبعد We are currently in a time which is of utmost importance for those who have children those who are usually at school or college or university and they are now back at home with their parents, back at home with their family members, this is an extremely important time. This time should be taken as a time for investment, a time for nurturing, a time for ibadah, silatul raham, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his rahmah hangs from his arch and is given to those who keep ties with their raham. They keep ties with their kin. In the holidays, we see each other, our family members, more often than we usually see each other. And for those that have children, it is important to utilize that time and invest. And investment with our children does not require capital, financial capital. Investment with our children requires love and time. That's it. Love and time. And so there is no excuse for any parent, whether poor or rich, whether sick or healthy, it requires love and time. And when we invest in our children with love and time, we are also investing not only in the individuals within our households, but the members of society, and therefore we are investing in society itself. When we invest in our children and the well-being of our children, we are investing into the well-being of individuals that are from the collective of Islam 
and therefore we are investing into Islam itself. And when we are neglectful of our children, we are neglecting society. When we are neglectful of our children, we are neglecting Islam. And we are going to have a consequential impact upon their Iman. Good or bad? It's important to realize this time is time that should be spent with the family, the holidays, whether we go abroad or we stay here. It doesn't have to be something elaborate. It doesn't have to be something fantastical. It can simply be sitting down and talking, reading a book together, going to the park, going to the museum, going shopping together, and so on and so forth. And there is an issue that needs to be addressed within our community that is having a major impact on our current generation and it's going to have an extremely major impact on the coming generation. And that is the issue of separation, divorce, at-talaq. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, أَبْغَضُ الْحَلَالِ إِلَى اللَّهِ at-talaq. أَبْغَضُ الْحَلَالِ at-talaq. Yes, it's halal. To divorce is halal. It's permissible. But it's أَبْغَضُ. أَبْغَضُ الْحَلَالِ It's the most ugliest of halals to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And bughd in Arabic is a very heavy word. It's heavier than, than, than karaha. Someone can say, akrahu shay'an. I dislike something. But to say, abghadu shay'an, there's a far more weighty meaning to it. It's permissible, but it's ugly. It's permissible, but it's detestable. And we live in a time wherein the haram has become makruh and the makruh has become mubah. We treat haram as if it's disliked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we treat that which is disliked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if it's permissible. It's okay, it's only makruh. And this is something which is halal, but it's not. It, the Prophet ﷺ didn't say akrahu halal. He said abghad. Ugly. Why is it ugly? Because it has a major impact on the lives of the two individuals that are separating. It has a major impact on the family members connected to those two individuals, the parents, the siblings. It has a major impact on the financial um, assets and, and the wealth of these two individuals. And more importantly than everything else mentioned and everyone else mentioned, it has a major, major, major impact on the children. A major impact on the children. And therefore, it has a major impact on the generations to come. There are some studies that suggest women that come from divorced households are if I'm not mistaken, 40% more likely to be in a divorced marriage themselves than others. And there are some minor statistics, findings from some studies that I'm going to share. And it's important, in this time where we're supposed to be investing with our family, we think about the consequences of separation. It leads to major issues, some findings. They find that there is a negative impact on children, i.e. divorce, regardless whether the separation was a bad separation or a good separation, i.e. an amicable one. Because there's a concept, there's an idea that no, we'll, we'll split and we'll be okay with each other, we'll be polite with each other, we'll stay in contact with each other, we'll work together when it comes to the kids, etc. Studies suggest that regardless whether the divorce is a good divorce or a bad divorce, if you can even term a divorce to be a good one, that it affects the children regardless. It impacts the children. What type of impact? Some studies suggest that there are more likely, the children of divorce are more likely than others to have behavioral problems. Behavioral problems. Problems within society due to their behavior, within school due to their behavior, with other kids, with other individuals due to their behavior. 
and most of us we can see with our eyes the reality you don't have to take you don't have to take the study you don't have to read the study to understand this go outside and have a look those that have lived a certain lifestyle those that see a certain lifestyle being lived there's a common common theme amongst all of them broken homes fatherless homes and we've spoken previously about the fatherless home it doesn't mean that the father isn't there physically no maybe he's there physically but he's not there emotionally he's not there mentally and so on and so forth the children that come from divorced homes are more likely to suffer mental health difficulties in their life in fact some studies suggest twice as likely than others some of the mental health issues that children can face as a consequence of divorce depression anxiety social phobias trust issues a reluctance to commit into relationships themselves why because they have the anxiety and the fear that their relationship is going to end up broken just as the relationship of those who they love the most their mother and father ended up broken and when it comes to divorce what is usually heard the mother and the father are thinking about themselves they're thinking about themselves the previous generation there are many things that we sometimes may mention as a community about the previous generation we can point out negative aspects of the previous generation one thing about the previous generation that they deserve credit for they kept their marriages together they kept their marriages together you speak to some of the women in the marriage in, in, in from the previous generation the suffering that they went through to keep their marriages together <coughs> unbelievable amount of suffering likewise the men why for the children's sake we have a generation now they think about themselves they think about their own feelings and desires and this is going to have a major impact on the children you may seek some peace momentarily today but that is going to lead to chaos for a long time to come as your children grow up studies they show that children from nuclear families are half as likely to suffer with mental health issues those that come from broken homes divorced families children that come from divorced families are twice as likely to live in poverty twice as likely to live in poverty they are more likely to fail academically children that the come that um, come from broken homes they often blame themselves for the divorce because they cannot conceptualize why their parents are splitting and we are living in a time now we are facing a time now where we need strength and unity more than anything else our children need the mother and the father together working toward the same direction providing them with an education emotional stability mental stability spiritual stability more than we need anything else our children are not in need of wealth as much as they are in need of mental emotional and spiritual stability our children are facing ideologies that we could not have imagined when we were younger and so our children require the hand of the man and the hand of the woman to be a roof above their heads and unfortunately it seems that in many cases we're going the other way we're opening the doors to our children to suffer because we're not looking at the bigger picture اقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله استغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه انه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله وحده وصلوات ربي وسلامه على اشرف الانبياء ومن تبعه وبعد there are many reasons for divorce and there are some situations where divorce is better than staying in the marriage some but those situations are very far and few between most situations the issues can be worked on 
most situations, the marriage can be saved. Most situations, the man and the woman can both be happy in the marriage. And there is a formula to everything in this life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in this life universal principles. If you boil the water to 100 degrees, it's going to boil. You heat it up to 100 degrees, it's going to boil. It's not going to boil at 96 degrees tomorrow and 87 degrees the day after and 115 degrees thereafter. No, 100 degrees every single day. One plus one will always equal two. Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a formula within the sharia, a formula that will provide a loving and caring marriage where both individuals will be happy. What's that formula? Think about the other and don't think about the self. That's the purpose that the rights are supposed to serve. A man has rights, a woman has rights, but it's not like a business contract. No, it's supposed to be rights that are conducive towards love and care. And when you look at those rights, the rights are the man should think about the well-being of the woman, the woman should think about the well-being of the man, and that way they're working toward each other. But when we have two individualistic people thinking only about themselves, what's going to happen? They're going to go separate directions. They're going to go the other way. We need to think about our children. We need to think about our ummah. There's no point in crying over Palestine when we're breaking up our homes. That's a problem that is contributing to the problem of Palestine, the problem of Yemen, the problem of Syria, Iraq, Africa. All of these problems that we're facing, we're contributing to these problems with our households. That's the reality of the matter. The champions and the ulama of Islam of the past, they had parents, they had teachers, they had uncles, they had aunties. If we want to rectify our ummah, we need to rectify our homes. If I, as a man, cannot implement Islam in my household, how am I going to talk about implementing Islam as a nation? If I would like to fix my ummah, I need to fix my home. If I would like to bring unity to my ummah, I need to bring unity to my home. We think small and we grow. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be from those who build our relationships in a way that pleases Him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring us and our, our spouses for the men, their wives, and for the women, their husbands together. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to think long term. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be from those who sacrifice for His sake. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us victory as Muslims wherever we are. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد وارض اللهم عن ابي بكر وعن عمر وعن عثمان وعن علي وعن سائر اصحابي اجمعين اللهم تقبل منا واعف عنا وتب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم اللهم اجعل بيننا بين بيننا وبين ازواجنا الحب والموده اللهم اجعلنا من الذين يرضونك يا رب العالمين في زواجنا وفي بيوتنا انك مجيب الدعوات واقم الصلاه